Good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, April 6th. It's uh, here in the UK. It's the beginning of the Easter weekend. Uh, the weather's been atrocious, actually, for the last couple of days. It's been very wet and windy. So uh, unusually, I've actually taken the last two days off so that I could concentrate on uh, getting this very overdue video uh, ready to send to you this evening. Uh, hopefully it will go out later, to, later this evening. Uh, I want to talk to you about holes, first of all. They are not something that we celebrate. Uh, normally they are either an indication of something missing or they are a gateway to a lot of pain and suffering. Um, that is unless, of course, you're a boat builder. Uh, only a boat builder could turn a hole into a work of art. So by way of introduction and an explanation to some of the features that appear in this upcoming video, I have prepared the following little animation to help you feel the love for a hole. Uh, in this particular case, it's the hole in the deck through which the mast is stepped, which is obviously something that, we're, that, that we've recently done. So uh, without further ado, I wish you all uh, peace and happiness. Let's suppose we want to place the mast here. Obviously, first we have to cut the hole. Next, the hole is strengthened by fitting mast partners below deck, large oak slabs of wood that hug the hole. The two halves of the partners are riveted together with dumps, and then the partners themselves are riveted to the deck beams either side of the hole. Back on deck, a wide ring around the hole is rebated with a router. Into this, an oak collar in four parts is snugly fitted. The joints of the collar are drilled and doweled with stop waters to allow any unwanted water to wick away on deck. The hole is now rock solid above and below the deck, but barely touching it. Now the mast is stepped and its rake settled on. To hold it in this exact position in the hole, wedges are carefully measured, cut and fitted, including a stepped head to the wedge to stop it falling through. The mast is unlikely to perfectly follow the plane of the hole, so on one side the wedges may well be negative, as in this case. They are generally fitted first, and they may need to be fitted at the side of the mast, for example, and then slipped around into position. Having gone to all this trouble to make such a strong and beautiful hole, all that remains is to protect it with its own frock, a nice canvas boot. Et voilà. Notice how, despite all these features of our hole, the top of the deck remains pristinely clear, nothing on it to invite dirt or rot. The perfect hole. Good morning everyone. It's, uh, I think it's the 2nd of February, 23. And uh, the job I'm doing today is uh, these mast wedges, they're called. So um, what happens is the mast is dropped in. It's held in position temporarily with basic wedges like this and then when everything's done and you've got your main cabling on your main stays um, these crude ones are replaced with permanent wedges yeah. I've done most of them I've got uh, two oops, you see there two on that side to do which I'm about to do now they're all nice and tight in here some of these are negative wedges so on this side they start thin and go fatter so they had to be worked in around the mass to get them in uh, so you get the mast plumb, line it up, line up at an edge of the mast with the corner of a building in both directions, <coughs> obviously. And uh, when you've got it there, you then measure up, which is what I'm about to do now. I use this, this is the profile. The wood I've got is already being cut, which I'll show you in a minute, to fit the, the mast, um, the curvature of the mast, I should say. So I put that there, mark where it meets the collar and on the outside there so i've got one two three marks so now i measure <coughs> the distance between the mast and the collar not the collar but the actual 
um, deck plank, where it, where it meets the deck planks, which is the same thing as the partners. So it's the partners and the deck planks which are, we're wedging up against. So I drop those calipers into the gap. I don't know whether you'd be able to see down there, maybe. That's about right there. That would be tight if I did it there, which is what I'm looking for. <coughs> and that is 41 mil. So this is my top wedge and it's the inside one that I've just measured. So that's 41 mil. And then I measure the other side. That's the same size. So that's also 41. That's good. Now I'm going to go down below <coughs> and measure up from the bottom, the, the bottom of the wedge, where it meets the bottom of the partners. So I'll do that next. So I've done the inside dimensions and there they are. Uh, you can see there 34 on the inside, 37 on the outside. So now we've got to translate that into the wood. And uh, this is the wood I'm using. It's already been shaped for me by Nielsen. So they've put that nice curvature on there with a the machine so that it's nice. That's the bit that sits up against the mast. So that matches the curvature of the mast. So I've just got to cut my wedge out of that. So here we go. So that's 303. The head will be 50, 50 mil. The collar is 70, so it takes me to 120. So this will be the head of the wedge. That will be the area that's up against the collar. And then this bit here We've got 50 mil for the uh, boot, so that's there. That's the bit that protrudes down below, which you'll be see inside the boat. So that's the foot. And this is the working area of the wedge. away is this bit here to that line there. There's my wedge shape, look, with the lip to stop the wedge falling through. I'll clean up all these edges. And now I sand back to the original marks, 41 and 37 on this side, 41 and 34 on that side, that line there. There you have it, I've um, sanded back to the original marks, which remember were generous, so it, probably, it should be tight at that. And you can see a slightly strange shape in the curvature, which again matches the reality. It was thicker, remember, on this side than this side. I can feel that going very tight. So. Gotta be careful not to take too much off because then I've got to start all, all over again. So let's try that. That's not far off, I don't think. Okay, that's gone. So there you go. That's the idea. So now I've just got this last one to do, this section in here, and I won't bore you by filming all that. Um, but that's the way it's done. I'll treat this with a bit of D1. So I've just got that little section in the middle to do, and then I can start tightening up all her shrouds. 
um, this one I tightened up yesterday so it's relatively tight but you can see the others are all quite loose look I've got a I've got a four stay on here this one here uh, so that's going to stop it going backwards so it can't fall back and I've got running back stays which are these here these are the running back stays that are attached here look and that's stopping it going forward so it's not going to fall out but so here we go uh, job finished there are the uh, wedges all nicely finished off you can see some little chips and chunks that broke away when I was putting them in but otherwise overall it's a pretty, pretty, pretty good job quite pleased with that looks fine I put some D1 on them so that's just drying now that will take a couple of days to dry so that's not too bad is it I'm now working on the uh, mizzen it's a slightly different it's a much smaller and the wedges are very different the way I've got to cut these uh, because I've got a different collar here it's, it's a, a smaller collar there and then uh, this here is the partners so relatively straightforward I've just finished that one I've uh, lined the mast up so I'm happy with the position of that it's offset this way which we want um, you know in order to get it plumb uh, but there you go, that's uh, mass wedges for you. I think you'll have had enough by now. I'll continue with that, hopefully get that finished tomorrow and then we can start getting our spars over. Get the boom up and the gaff, uh, the um, bow sprit, that's what we really want to get on. And also the, boot, the main boom. I want to get it on because I need to know what gap I've got here to play with because I've just bought um, a solar panel which James is going to sort out next, when he gets back from Scotland in a couple of weeks time and I've got to have this ready for him and fit it so uh, we'll be getting the boom on quite soon so that we can see you know get that fitted so oh, yeah. I've now done the uh, mizzen wedges and there they are originally the uh, wedges that were in here were bearing on this collar which is just basically a collar screwed down into the uh, partners. The, this is, these are the partners, albeit sort of constructed into these uh, lockers. But nevertheless, that's what uh, the mass needs to be wedged against, not that actual collar. So that's why you see a little gap here in these. The wedge isn't bearing on the collar, it mustn't. So I've, um, I've made them small enough not to do that. So the actual wedge is below this, if you like, doing the job. So there you go. I'll just put some D1 on those now, and uh, that, that's that job done. I've just finished off the uh, mainmast boot, and there she is. Um, I didn't film doing this because it's uh, relatively straightforward. Basically, what I've done is, uh, following instructions from Dominic, I have cut strips of uh, lead like that, that's uh, two centimetres wide, 20 mil wide, and fastened it to pin the bottom of the boot to the collar, the mast collar, using these uh, brass nails. I've pre-drilled the holes um, because these are quite soft and they're likely into oak they bend they wouldn't actually push in and also they would risk splitting the wood because you've got a nice long line all the way around you could quite easily split the wood so I've drilled them with quite a thick uh, um, drill bit almost as thick as the nail themselves so they went in relatively easily a to protect the wood but also so that this can come off again because the sort of thing you're gonna have to maintain in the future so that's all it that's all it amounts to a couple of points that were uh, I can pass on uh, from uh, from my instructions and that is not to go right down to the deck with it leave an air space between here and the uh, deck at the bottom of the actual material where it's fastened otherwise obviously that's a rot area so there's a, a good five mil all the way around at the bottom there um, other than that it's pretty straightforward and uh, there you have it it's, uh, Job done. So now it's the mizzen, and uh, Randy's just putting. Hello, Randy. 
Randy's just um, D1ing this. Randy's um, putting uh, Dexor D1 in there, saturated. You you can put more in there, Randy. It'll soak it soak it up like a sponge. It will. So there you go. Randy's doing that. Unfortunately, I think I've probably mentioned this before. The boot that I put on, I put on the wrong way round because uh, I put the boots on before we stepped the masts. But unfortunately, this one <laughs> I put it the wrong way round. So. On uh, this one, I've had to take the boot off, which I've just done now. Uh, it's in the wheelhouse. And as soon as Randy's finished this, I'm going to bring it back out and hand sew it back again. relatively straightforward the, the good thing about the lead is you can you know if you get offline a little bit it's easy to tweak it back up and it you know it hammers into whatever shape you want really uh, these are put at one inch spaces um, I've drilled them as I did with the main one generously so that the, the a they don't split the collar which is not great on this one it's, it's quite small uh, but it's mainly so it can come off again for maintenance because I'm sure this will fail at some stage or whatever so both boots done now there you go the, little mark. the main one and uh, those are my splices there you can see a lot nicer than the original there a little bit longer but I've I've tapered them you know by reducing the amount of strands as I got towards the end of the splice I've been able to taper the splice in so that when that is running up and down it's it'll have a much smoother path there won't get hung up or caught uh, so that's job for this morning and then I'll I'll move on and do this piece so I've got to replicate that basically clean up the little eye there and um, replace that one with that one and then that one can be thrown away so that's it that's my job for this morning Yeah, just over just over a quarter of an inch, or around about uh, six mil. So it's pretty thick stuff, and the only way I could get that to to fit at all was to wet it, because what I've had to do, as I said, it's it's sort of a, a backwards a backwards arch, but a forward loop. So if it was coming around this way, it was a lot easier. It's bending in the direction that it's arching, but it's arching one way, and bending forward, looping round the actual um, uh, the, the ring, the metal ring, it's, it's, it's rotating the opposite way. So the secret seemed to be slow and steady really, you know, just doing it uh, a bit at a time. You can see there 
I've beveled the cuts at the ends there and there so it bevels in uh, from the outside because So there you go, um, you get the idea. I've uh, marked them out, I marked them out this morning. <clears throat> I took all the tape off before, obviously. Took all the tape off, um, took it off the ring so that I could mark out at uh, one eighth from the edge and then one eighth, uh, sorry, three eighths of an inch from the edge in and then three eighths between each of the holes. That's the recommendation of the explanation I'm following in The Complete Rigger's Apprentice by Brian Toss. I'm sorry if I, I, I haven't um, narrated this work because both Randy and I have just tested uh, positive for COVID. She's had it for a couple of days and I started yesterday and we feel really rough. So uh, I'm finding it very difficult to concentrate to narrate at the same time as doing the work. So, so uh, you'll have to excuse me for that, but I'll, 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 tr I'll film as much of this as I possibly can. Okay, here's a tricky bit. Um, uh, threading the actual needles um, using that <coughs> standard uh, this is one mil waxed whipping twine is I'm going to draw those threads through so that the needles end up more or less in the center of the thread I have no idea how this works out I'm just following the instructions um, it seems a lot of setup, but I can imagine why. <clears throat> and then it says, let the needles here descend all the way to the middle. This would probably be a lot easier if I wasn't befuddled with COVID, but let's see. Let go on. Through there like that. That one will go over diagonally and through that hole there. Um, the camera woman <laughs> caught COVID last week, uh, on Wednesday last week, so she's on day seven of it, she's just coming out of it, and uh, I'm on day five, so pretty thick. We've been laid low with it, to be honest with you. Anyway, I've just brought you in here because this is my first attempt to get back to work, and what I'm doing is this uh, traveller. It's a traveller for our bow sprit. And I really desperately want to get it done because uh, we've got the bowsprit on, uh, but I can't put the whisker stays and bob stay on until I get this over the end of the bowsprit because it will be permanently on once it's on. The way that Brian Toss describes it, he describes doing each uh, stitch at a time. Tension that one and then lace the next one, tension that one, lace the next one, tension that one, and tension as you go. What I've found is doing that loosens up behind. As you can see I have to pull the uh, hide apart to get to that hole through there look uh, and the similar the other way and when you do that of course everything else loosens up behind it. So what I'm trying now is something a little bit different and I, what I've done is treat it like a, a shoelace, if, a shoe and a shoelace if you like. I've loosely as you can see done I don't know how many there are um, eight or nine stitches I've done there loosely uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue doing that loosely and then I'm going to go back and tighten them as I go much as you would with a with a shoe and I'm, hopefully by that way I can keep it tight all the way along I won't be able to go right to the end because I'm doing it loose I'm going to run out of thread the, the good thing about doing it this way keeping it loose is that it's very very easy now to get the needle in so that's another benefit to it look I can get it nicely lined up and straight in there It'll work. I, I have a feeling this is probably a better method so that's that that now becomes the left needle so we start again here uh, it is very much like um, plaiting it's yeah or plaiting or, or I think it's very much like 
shoelacing really so uh, i hope that gives you an idea give me time to sort of cool down as well because this covid is um, still affecting us so all i got to do now is put a reef knot in which will disappear on up in up under the under the leather so that's my reef knot and then just snip the ends off that's what it says see there it's not too bad look um, a little bit wide there but <clears throat> hopefully it'll just sort of find its way down i don't know what's going to happen when it dries mind you it might all pull back from there i suppose but experience. i think an experienced person will probably get a much better finish but um that's going to be good enough for me anyway you know one day in the future if i ever end up with nothing better to do uh, i could always sit and spend a nice weekend in the sunshine having another go but for now that'll do so now what i've got to do <clears throat> is the other half okay so that's that half I finished it. Um, I, I wasn't able to film most of this because it was pretty boring to be honest with you anyway. It all went fine. I did run out of thread on this side so I had to stop there and uh, seize it and then continue just for that last inch which is a little bit of a shame but uh, otherwise it's not too bad. There you go. I've, I've moved it forward so I can get onto the key side there and get to the end of the bowsprit because I've got to The main all done really i suppose have i no not the lazy jacks but otherwise yeah boom gaff all done uh, all working fine everything's okay it's, i haven't uh, finished off in terms of i've got to replace for instance that shackle and uh, i haven't moused these shackles in case they had to come off again so the, there'll be the little jobs and i've got to drill a hole through there and put a split pin in that bolt there in that nut but otherwise that's all done uh, we're working on at the moment the uh, solar panel uh, Dominic's going to make the cowling that goes around it um, for that to sit in so that's all being designed all measured and everything and uh, that's all ready to go back on because the solar panel's a big one single 550 watt panel and it would have come right to this edge which wouldn't have been very attractive so we've moved the gallows back which helps us because the gallows weren't very well uh, designed in a way as you can see getting that boom into th those gallows is a uh, one-time hit you know you, you it's very easy to miss i should say i suppose you know you drop that boom and unless it's precisely over the top of them it's going to slide down the side and on top of the uh, wheelhouse so we redesign them um one long piece of wood from one side of the wheelhouse to the other uh, then there is the we've been working on the sheets we've changed the whole way that they worked and then there's the mizzen here you can see that um, I've put the boom on uh, because we haven't got a capping rail I'm in some difficulty regarding cleating the sheets back here that's uh, by the by so that's all up and running we've got that on the topping lifts which are all working I've been putting a few cleats on for the topping lifts that may be modified because it really ought to be behind the last of the stanchions as Tommy pointed out really that should be anchored somewhere forward of that so that when you're running downwind the boom can come all the way around to that point and then we've got the this my job for today is I'm just working on the gaff this is the gaff all frozen out because I say it's a freezing morning I took the old that's the old uh, eye bolt out on which the gaff is uh, hauled up 
and you can see there's quite a lot of wear. I don't know whether you will be able to see that if I put it out there. Will that be? Yeah, you can see there's quite a lot of wear on the um, on the uh, eye bolt there. So I pulled that out last night. Unfortunately, I was a bit reckless, and it took some of the wood. You know, when it when I knocked it out from the other side. It's, uh, I did it, I, I should have been much more careful and I've taken some wood off so my job today is to make a little graving piece to go in there um, not a bad idea really because even without the damage that I caused it was well pulled into the wood here and there was a little trough where the eye bolt had been pulled down into the softer wood uh, which was just an area where water would pool anyway so I can now make that fair so that water won't. So I can, it's an opportunity to opportunity to improve it. You know, I put it that way. Always look on the bright side, eh? So uh, that's my job today. I've got that to do, and I've got the strop, which the peak halyard attaches to, and which hauls this up. The mizzen. Randy's outside painting the light boxes there, as you can see, and various other things. Well, the first bit of good news is it doesn't look as if the uh, rats have been in, so that's that's good. No, no uh, rats or mice nests in here. Remember, these have been in the bag for eight years. So that's the first time it's been out of this bag in eight years. What have I done? I've uh, attached the head of the sail to the gaff. That looks a little loose there, but I think that'll be fine. I don't want it too tight on there, actually, so that, that'll probably sort itself out. It can always be changed later. So I've attached the head. Now I'm going to attach the lip of the sail to the mast with these uh, rings here, with the little bobbins on. So that's my next job. And uh, then we can uh, attach the foot and then we can raise the cells. <laughs> 